recording. So I'm trying to speak up. I'll try to speak up. Um, I wanted to talk about this card. This is the Ten of Swords, Clouds. And if you see, there's a camel. Okay, there's a camel, a lion, and then a boy. And the boy is playing a flute. And that's basically evolution. It's the evolution of the human soul. It's the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. It's also um, Sun, Moon, and Ascendant. We're trying. That's why we do this. You know, we, we're triangles. We're called tertiary. So the bottom part there, the camel, that's our sun. So I'm a Cancer sun. I was born in July. This is my sun. My sun is that camel, the Cancer person. Now my moon is the lion. And the moon is like, this is what your mother birthed you to be. The lion. It's ferocious. It's got a lot of energy. It's creative, it's gorgeous, it's power, life force, you know, but the mother tames us because, you know, in order to really ascend, which is the boy there, the only way to ascend is to learn how to create that beautiful light shown on his garments with that fiery energy that the lion has. And it all comes from our sun. That camel there. That's such a dirty foundation, you know? So that explains it all. Sun, moon, and ascendant. The camel, the lion, and the child. So I'm trying to make some sense out of this situation. To me, this is, okay, I gotta get closer. This closer. All right. This is music. Music is the King of Cups. Healing. The King of Cups. That's music. So music is cups. Is it pentacles, earth? Is it um, fire? No, because fire is really projected and music is receptive. It's very malleable. Fire, you can't shape fire. I mean, you can add different pieces of wood or but it's gonna be what shape it's gonna be. It's independent. Is music independent? Is music autonomous? No. Music is not autonomous. It's like water. Is water autonomous? Only in its incessant seeking for level. Other than that, no. It's completely receptive. So that's music. Music is constantly seeking to be heard. <clears throat> but it doesn't discriminate regarding who can express its voice. 
that's true equality. Everybody's healed. That's what this means to me. Everybody gets healed. That's what music is, okay? It's the healing water. So, I mean, we have to use pictures because there's no way that we can grasp what what's going on, uh, what we are to do, because we're obviously, we're being called to do, <laughs> but we don't know how, what, do, I mean, well, I think everybody does, is doing what they can, or what they know, you do the best you can, you do. Now, some of us feel like this. This is the Five of Pentacles. Some of us feel like the outsider. Just look at the beautiful rainbows out there. that he wants to go. But the lock is open. He could get out if he wanted to. But it's such a lonely feeling, that outsider. Um, I'm trying to, right? But what I did get instead, because I started searching the cards, past lives and see those salamanders there but look at the hands those hands holding all those people like lovingly gently and look at all the people below they look like they're asleep or they're just kind of mm. But what's happening here? They're, these are all real characters. That's you. That's all the yous that you were. They're still in you. Those hands are the womb. That's your womb, male or female. This is all your lives. You still carry them. And there's the ones that are prior to that, that are asleep. <clears throat> and those salamanders, that represents fire, that's Sagittarius. They're, they're not going to let you get, in, you know, information from down there if, if it's going to blow your head off, you know, if you're going to break your brain, okay? You can shatter your brain by trying to find out too much <clears throat> when you're not ready. You know, look how motherly. Look at those hands. You're safe. All those people that are you, represent you in those other pieces of memories, they're all safe in the mother's womb, in the hands of the mother. They're safe. So the past life card in the tarot represents the moon card, which is, you know, the moon. And, but there's like creepy crawlies coming out of the water. Okay, that's the water of memory. <clears throat> so anyway. What I find interesting, and I'm gonna have to get a picture of it. This here is sort of like a mural that's painted on the side of the dam over here. And it shows a scuba diver, and in his, like an astronaut, and in his globe of his face, it looks like this. All these people, faces of people, tons. So I'm gonna go down and get a picture of it um, today. When it's daylight, so I can go down there. And uh, just driving down the road, I could get a picture of it, but I'm gonna try to get out and actually get up. It's a huge mural. And, dude, it's part of the dam. So it's interesting that, um, generally it's a man-made lake, which means they buried a town, right? 
Now that's right in plain sight. Nobody notices that or they note they notice it and but it's disconnected. Because it's another life. That was probably memories of ancestors. People they could have been related to. And I don't know when that happened. I mean I haven't looked at when that dam was built and nothing. But I'm going to go down and get a picture of that and it shows all the faces and I'm, it's pretty grim. It's actually uh, almost like a memorial of the people that they drowned building it. All down. But that's nothing. West Boylston. I lived in West Boylston. The only building left was the old stone church. Apparently it had just been built when they found it necessary to flood the town so that Boston could have water. So, um... Yeah. They buried it at like a, a little industrial New England town. I lived in, in the town on the upside. Obviously, everybody's on the upside. Um, but there was one place where you could go where it was the lowest part. And it was a beautiful church. We used to go and play. So, yeah. But anyway, so then the next thing is... The reason why these salamanders have to protect us is because this is this is our vision right here. We don't see anything as it really is. We can't because we have such you know a minute section of the entire light spectrum to actually be able to behold consciously. This is the best we can do. Okay, we see we don't see like this is him right, but this is what she sees. And this is her, right? But this is what he sees. But it is what it is. We're in a mirror looking backwards, okay? And uh, But that's why. I mean, if all that was suddenly clarified and unveiled, all these people come flooding into your memory, you would go crazy. You would literally have a psychic break. And we can't do that. We have to be sensible. <laughs> sensible. Because the energies are coming. Everybody's waking. We're about to launch Music Alchemy. Like the real one. <laughs> that I've been planning for, I don't know, 2015. Uh, yeah, so it'll probably blast off next year. And the reason why... It will blast off is because now this is the 12 12 is in the tarot Ten, eleven, twelve. 12 the hanged man so this is the hanged man look at that why is it the hanged man well I believe the tree in the original hanged man. I think that's, look at this. It's Christ carrying the cross. All right, and why is this new vision? And how do I know that it's time to launch Music Alchemy or that anything can happen at all? New vision, the hanged man. Because look, we're, re we're on the backs of our ancestors. They are not going to fail us. No which way, no how. Okay? We're vibrant. We're young. It, that looks like Sagittarius. That's sort of like, you know, shooting for an aim. We're going somewhere, dude. Look at the sun. Look at all those geometric shapes. But we're on the backs of our ancestors. We're in good hands. Hands. Remember the hands? The moon card. Look at those hands. You're safe in the womb of the mother. All of us. Disparate individuals. Everyone's unique and a freak. But we don't see each other properly. We see this. It's such bogus. It's because our eyes are broken. I mean, we were literally created blind. A race of blind people. And so because of that, we don't even see each other. We all feel like we're outsiders. <laughs> it's like... 
But music, you notice the hands are in different directions. Music unites everyone. Music unites everyone and heals everyone at the same time. <clears throat> so this is my moniker, the quantum rebel. I say quantum, and now that I'm a reverend, uh, I call it quantum reverence because it's the ministers of the future, the monks of the future, the quantum rebel. This is the, these are the monks of the future. These are the ministers, the sages of the future. The modern mystic. Even though inside, I feel like this. Like, I'm seasoned. Um, the three of fire. See, this is just... It's like waking up in the morning at the campsite and the big old bonfire you had the night before is still just cooking like nice warm and you're making coffee I mean that's this beautiful three of wands really I mean that's what I feel like inside but this is me now outside I and and I don't see that as one person intensity and I believe this is the knight of wands so the Knight of Wands is on a horse and he's, the horse has got his knees kicked up and, you know, it's absolutely fire. But I don't see that as one person. See, I feel like there's all those other people are in there too. And this is just when you are all kind of thinking in the same way, okay? It's, it's going to benefit me to play every day. And I do. But if I play every day and my mission to give to others is to play for them or to help them to know, know how to play or have the means to play, win, win. If I just do it for me and know you, there's no there there. There's no, there's no anchor. You know, we have to be grounded in giving to each other profusely. <laughs> but, you know, it's hard. It's hard because, you know, right now I am going into this ascension. That's the boy, okay? Or it could be a girl, it doesn't matter. But the lion, right? There's the camel. That's the sun, the moon. And I'm moving from my moon phase into my ascension. And uh, they're in completely different stat like stature. Okay, the camel is just sitting there. The lion's like rearing up. The boy is flying in the other direction. So it's like, it's another direction. It's a completely different direction. I mean, literally. And I'm going to make this comment. I need to make a comment about blowing bubbles. I'm in the bathtub. I got my head under the water. And I do this exercise where I put my fingers on my third eye. Put my thumb on the side of my nose. And I breathe in. And then I put my finger on the other side and breathe out. Okay, so... It's a meditation. It's a form of meditation. It clears your sinuses too. So I was doing that under the water, and I noticed that one side, because when you're blowing bubbles under the water, it makes a sound. It's kind of like, you know. Well, when I did it on this side, it was rhythmic, and it was kind of, you know, every once in a while there'd be like a little explosion. But when I did it on this side. It was big explosions, one after another, and then sometimes it'd be a rhythm. I was like, wow, that's a huge difference. Huge difference. What is going on? So I'm blowing in. This is feeding the left part of my brain. This goes right there, right? My left hand. Now my left hand, apparently, it switches, right? So, but my sinuses are in my ocular, and they're not switched back and forth. They're switched upside down. 
So, you know, we got all these cross wire, you know, it's a great, great mechanism. This year's model tops. The user guide sucks. <laughs> okay. And there's no tutorials. It's all, you know, on the fly you learn, right? Um, so I tried this little experiment and I kept doing it and kept doing it. I was in the bathtub for like a half an hour just blowing bubbles on the side of, under the water. And uh, eventually I was able to get more of a rhythm. Like eventually it started, I got, the difference wasn't as much, you know, after like a half an hour. So I don't know. I do this once a week or so, you know, just to check in with the disparity between the two sides of my brain or my eyes or my sinuses okay so that's bifurcated that's like super bifurcated so um information you know i'm not really sure what i learned but i learned something and i was able to rebalance it you know so i had an experience where I have to define music. I have to define sound. I have to define sound as it relates to electronic amplification in a physical analog human. Okay, good. So, the difference was one situation was monitors, 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 monitors. I felt like, oh my God, the clock is ticking. I got 15 minutes to survive before the oxygen runs out of the room. I mean, it was just a panic, fight, flight, not flight. It was fly. <laughs> and I did. And then the next one was just as soon as it clicked, it was like, sweet. And I walked in and the love, oh my God. Love, love, love. Expectation of love. Expressions. Caressing. Not just acceptance, but integration. And desire. Passion. Just giving, thriving, sharing. It was miraculous. Mm -hmm. The black helicopters are always following me. No, I live by an uh, army base, I think. So anyway, so there, so that's a. I was feeling left out. You know, and then there's, you know, also the authorities, which you can't really avoid. So you act as if, 